And we're back on The Fowler Show. It's time for your Political Maniacs. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders on Tuesday said that she could not guarantee that the, Ameri that the American people would never hear President Trump say the Edward on a recording. The statement comes in light of a scathing allegation made by Omarosa Marigold Newman in her recently released tell-all book, Unhinged. Marigold Newman alleges that there was a recording of Trump using the racial slur during a filming of his reality show, The Apprentice. The former White House official released on Tuesday a recording of several Trump campaign aides discussing the potential fallout if the alleged video of Trump using the racial slur were to surface. While Trump denies ever saying the word, other former guests on The Apprentice have also voiced their concerns. Magician Penn Gillette, who appeared on The Apprentice in 2012, told reporters this week that he would consistently hear the president say racially insensitive comments and would not be surprised if they were caught on tape. Now, as you guys know, I'm reading through the book. Now, let me, before I go any further on this, there's so many people out there who are on cable news who are making comments about Omarosa and about this book. And they haven't even opened the book and read the book. They're reading excerpts and they're listening to gossip. I read the book. I'm reading the book. Same goes for Donna Brazile's book. When Donna Brazile's book came out, there were all these people who made comments and had things to say, and nobody read the damn book. I read the book. If I'm going to make a comment about the book, trust and believe. We here at The Fowler Show, we're going to read the book. We're going to know what they said. Now, I haven't gotten to the N-word tape part yet, but when I get there, trust me, we'll do a segment on it. But here's what we know. First, let's listen, in, listen to the exchange between Kristen Walker of NBC and um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders in the White House press briefing room. Can you stand at the podium and guarantee the American people they'll never hear Donald Trump utter the N-word? I can't guarantee uh, anything, but I can tell you that the president addressed this question directly. I can tell you that I've never heard it. Uh, I can also tell you that if myself or the people that are in this building serving this country every single day, doing our very best to help people uh, all across this country and make it better, if at any point we felt uh, that the president was who some of his critics claim him to be, we certainly wouldn't be here. Now here is what's so shocking about this particular exchange. In just a couple sentences after that, Sarah Huckabee straight out lies about black unemployment. She says that President Trump has, has gotten more black people jobs in his first year in office than Obama did in all eight years. That it turned out to be false. President Trump's only created 700,000 African American jobs. In his first year, Barack Obama has created 3.2 million jobs in his eight years. And let's also not remember the context of Barack Obama's first two years when we were in the Great Recession. But I digress. So Sarah Huckabee Sanders straight out lies about Obama's numbers, but she refuses to answer this question. From somebody who just lies so freely or twists the truth, I like to say twist the truth because I think there's people who watch this show who are Trump supporters, and when I say lie, they don't like the word, I think the word lie, they, they, find, they find, I don't know, I guess they find the word lie offensive. So twist the truth. They traffic in fabrications. <laughs> That's a creative way to say lie, right? So she lies all the time, or she traffics in fabrications all the time. But when it comes to this one, Sarah Huckabee Sanders cannot guarantee that there's not a video of the president using the N-word. Now, there's a lot of things I can guarantee. I can guarantee you that there's not a video of my producer, Rich Webster, saying the N-word. Period. I'm not a spokesperson, but I've known him for years. Um, and it would, I would be aghast if there was a video of my producer saying the N-word over and over again in a derogatory manner. But I can almost guarantee that there would not be a video of it. Uh, with certainty. So the fact that she couldn't guarantee that even though the president denies it, says to me, America, that where there's smoke, mm, there's a little fire. Now, let's take this story a step further. Later on in the week, one of the people that was in this conference call, Katrina Pearson, sat down with Ed Henry on Fox News at night. And in that exchange, Ed, there was a quote in the script 
of the teleconference where Katrina Pearson says, it's true, and it's embarrassing, I think were the exact words. And Katrina was like, oh, I wasn't talking about that. So Ed was like, what are you talking about? Well, what, 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 she was like, what the other guy was saying. But that didn't make any sense. So Omarosa released tapes of conference calls where Trump associates were literally talking about what they would do if this tape was ever released. Now let me say this, as somebody who's worked on campaigns, who've worked on issue campaigns, who've worked in the trenches, you always do these type of damage control preventative calls all the time. Not over N-word tapes, but over anything. You might be working on a campaign, like I mean as folks know I worked on the Detroit Public Schools campaign, and we had tons of calls about well, what happens if this happens, what happens in this in inevitability, what happens in that inevitability, and you play it out. And you think about how you handle it, you think about the strategy, you think about how you would deal with it. The fact that there were two calls about this N-word tape says to me that this N-word tape likely does exist. Now I haven't gotten that far in the book, but I think it exists. And let me, let's get some more context here. So President Trump, after Omarosa's book comes out, says this via Twitter. When you give a crazed, crying lowlife a break and you give her a job at the White House, I guess it just didn't work out. Good work by General Qu Kelly for quickly firing that dog. That was President Trump. Throughout this entire ordeal of Omarosa releasing this book, the White House has responded like they're like, uh, like literally like a group of a group of people trying to swat a fly in a kitchen, like all out, like we're trying to get this fly. Everybody, all hands on deck. Now here's my thing: if Omarosa wasn't such a threat, and if they weren't so worried, why are they acting this way? When Sean Spicer released his book, nobody called him a dog. Nobody. When Gary, when, when, when Gary Cohn left, nobody attacked him. When Anthony Scaramucci, who attacked John Kelly, left the White House, he didn't get this level of attack. So why is it that this particular woman, Omarosa, Mary Gold Newman, not a big fan, personally, why is she being attacked at such a high level compared to all these other individuals? One, maybe she's African-American. Or two, maybe she has, maybe Omarosa really does have the receipts that will bankrupt this White House, and that's why everybody's running scared. But there's never a time, America, there is never a time, and there's never a day, and there's never a moment where the leader of the free world should ever call an, a, a woman a dog, ever that is below the office of president, that is below our standards as Americans. I don't care if you like to hit back. You never hit a woman that low.